Deciding between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro has been a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be. You think it's simple. Look at the specs, pick the one with a bigger number, and you're done, right? But honestly, it's not that easy. The MacBook Air, for example, is really thin, and the MacBook Pro is a bit more chunky. And after daily driving both the MacBook Air for a while and the MacBook Pro, I've decided which one makes the most sense for me, and hopefully which one makes the most sense for a lot of you. Now let's quickly address the obvious. Spec-wise, the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air are in totally different classes. The MacBook Pro clearly has more power, it has more performance, and if you're someone who needs that performance, I think the video could end right here and the choice is pretty clear. This MacBook Pro has a better screen, better cooling, better performance, and overall it's just a better laptop. But here's the thing, most people don't care or don't need all of that extra stuff. If you're like me, you're probably not spending 12 hours a day crunching code and rendering 3D animations, and if you are, well, your life is probably a bit cooler than mine. For most of us, it's the little things that matter, like how the laptop feels in your hands, how it fits on your lap, and overall, is it fun to use? Now, I've been daily driving the base model M3 MacBook Air and the base model M3 MacBook Pro without any of the fancy M3 Pro or M3 Max chips. And after a lot of back and forth, I think I'm ready to do my comparison between these two devices and come to a decision. To keep this fair, I'm breaking down everything into sort of a five bucket point system. And I picked five points on purpose because I want one of these to be the winner at the end of this video. The categories are gonna be design and feel, display and audio, performance and usability, battery life and portability, and price to value. All right, let's reposition this and let's get into it in a bit more detail. All right, let's kick things off with design and feel because let's be honest, this is the first thing you're gonna notice when you open up your box. The MacBook Air is a stunner. I mean, this thing is just so thin and sure it's not the thinnest laptop of the bunch compared to other Windows laptops, for example, but it's thin enough to where I feel like this thing is lightweight, balanced, and just a joy to carry. Whether you're bringing this around and working at a cafe or a coffee shop or just using this on your lap or maybe in a cramped kind of airplane seat, it just is the right size and the right feel for what I want my portable laptop to be. Now, the MacBook Pro is different. It's thicker, it's heavier, and it definitely means business. And yeah, that's great if you want a device that looks the part and does the part, to be honest, but not all of it is about kind of getting work done and having a super portable powerhouse. Unless you're someone that pushes your laptop to the limit every single day, it's unlikely they're going to use your MacBook Pro to that extent. And I have to give the point here to the MacBook Air when it comes to the look and the feel of the MacBook. Next up is display and audio. And while this is probably gonna be a given that the MacBook Pro was gonna win this category, I do wanna give the MacBook Air a little bit of a chance here. So let's start with the MacBook Air. The display is excellent, the speakers are excellent, and whenever you're not comparing it against the MacBook Pro, I've never had a moment where I'm like, damn, this display sucks, or I wish these speakers were better. It's bright, sharp, it's vibrant, the colors are good, it's well calibrated. For day-to-day -day browsing and general use and even some professional use, the MacBook Air's display and the speakers are basically great, and you'll never have a moment of not feeling like these are enough for you. Now, the MacBook Pro, though, is on kind of another level. The mini LED makes the brightness, especially in HDR, pop like crazy to like an eye-searing brightness. The contrast is insane on mini LED, and the 120 hertz display just makes everything else feel like it's not enough and makes the MacBook Air 60 hertz display just feel a bit rough. And the same goes for audio. The MacBook Pro speakers are full, punchy, just loud and, and clear. Whereas the MacBook Air, while they are also punchy and loud and clear, they just don't compare to the MacBook Pro's full-fledged speakers. I remember I was at a hotel room the other day and the speakers weren't working on the TV and I was just using my MacBook at the same distance as a TV and it sounded so crisp and clear that it didn't feel like it was coming from a laptop. So yes, obviously the MacBook Pro takes this category, but the MacBook Air really is not that far behind, and if you don't have them both side by side, you will not be disappointed with either. All right, next, let's talk about performance, and this is where things can get a little bit tricky. If you're comparing the base model M3 MacBook Air with the M3 Pro or M3 Max chips on the MacBook Pro, it is bar none not even a comparison. The Pro and Max chips on this device are just fantastic, whereas the regular M3 on the MacBook Air is fine. But we're talking about base models for both of these. I have the base M3 version of the MacBook Pro and the base M3 version of the MacBook Air. And with that in consideration, the performance is closer than you might think. For everyday tasks like browsing, general video editing, or just day-to-day -day use, the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro both feel snappy and both feel really good to use. Where the Pro pulls ahead is in sustained use. And what I mean by that is that if you're exporting a video or rendering a video or doing some code things, the MacBook Pro will be able to sustain that performance for longer, where the MacBook Air just kind of starts to choke itself out. It's not terrible, but you will notice that the Air does tend to push a little bit harder when it comes to sustained use, and you'll notice that drop in performance over time. 
Now, obviously the MacBook Pro gets the point for this one, but the MacBook Air can get to like 90% of what the MacBook Pro can do. And if you're not looking for super professional workflows, you will not notice a big difference between general use on either of these laptops. Now let's move on to the battery life and portability. And for battery life, we're looking at all day battery life and some with both of these devices. And it's to a point where sure, one of them might edge out a couple more hours, but we're looking at both really good battery life that I kind of want to negate that part of this category altogether. Portability though, is where the MacBook Air really starts to shine. It's so light and thin, you could just toss it in your bag. You won't feel the weight and even carrying it on its edge just feels so weightless and effortless compared to something that's um, a bit bigger. The MacBook Pro is heavier, it's bulkier, it takes more effort to pick it up, holding it from its corner doesn't feel as good, and it's just overall a bigger device to bring around. I don't think we need to spend more time in this category. The point clearly goes to the MacBook Air for the portability aspect, but if you need the performance, you need the performance, and if you have to carry around this MacBook Pro, you kind of know you have to carry it around. So at this point, we're sitting at two to two. Two points for the MacBook Air and two points for the MacBook Pro. We're gonna go into the last category now, which is price to value. Now the MacBook Air starts at $1,099 and the MacBook Pro starts at $1,599. We're looking at a $500 price difference, but to be fair, there are different specs on each of these. If you spec out the Air to get as close to a match of the Pro, you're looking at $1,299. And to be fair, let's assume that price difference of 300. For that extra $300, the Pro is giving you better speakers, a better screen, and more sustained performance. But here's the thing, most people don't actually need those upgrades. The Air already does 90% of what the Pro can do when it comes to performance, and if you're someone who needs that sustained use, you know you need that sustained use, but for general day-to-day, -day, I've never had a feeling of needing that extra performance. The MacBook Air does what the MacBook Pro can do for less money, it is easier to carry around, it's more portable, and just overall a more fun device to use that I think I need to give the point to the MacBook Air, especially because if you don't need the extra storage even, getting it for $1,099 is a $500 difference compared to the Pro, and it just makes more sense for most people. I'm using the base storage on my MacBooks, and I've always have been, and I've never really gotten to the point of needing extra storage, and if I did, I'll just get a portable SSD and carry that around as well. So here's the bottom line. If you're a professional that needs sustained performance or needs that extra boost that you get out of the Pro and don't mind carrying around a little bit more heft, the MacBook Pro is definitely the better laptop overall, bar none. But for everyone else, the MacBook Air is gonna get you almost exactly where you need to get to for a portable laptop. And it does that while being just a joy to use and so easy to carry around. It's lighter, it's more portable, and it's a better value. And I think it's a smarter choice for more people, including myself. That's it for today. Let me know which one you're leaning more towards if you're still undecided, because while I'm leaning a bit more towards the MacBook Air at this point, my mind is very quickly changed. If this video helped you out, please consider leaving the video a like and consider subscribing as it greatly benefits the channel. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.